When the project was written originally, the prevention pilot site was here, Maria Island Nature Reserve. But very quickly we realized we had to focus on a wider area, which is the Point Saab Environmental Protected Area, gazetted in 2007. This is all this area. It contains Maria Island Marine Reserve and Wildlife Reserve, which have been gazetted in the 80s and are vested in the St. Lucia National Trust. It also contains two Ramsar sites, the Mangote mangroves and Savans Bay, with four species of mangroves, one of them regarded rare. And it is an important bird area, especially the St. Lucia blackfinch is globally endangered. There are a couple of non-assessed species where we have insufficient information. The Maria Islands are the main focus, of course. They have six endemic reptile species, most iconic probably the whiptail lizard that those of you who were there for the project meeting would have seen on Pralin Island, and the St. Lucian racer snake, a harmless snake that was declared, declared extinct in 1936, but was rediscovered in the 70s. The global population is of about 100 specimens only on Maria Major. It is also an important bird area, especially for ground nesting seabirds that are very vulnerable to IS predators. And the marine environment has seagrass beds that are important for juvenile fish and coral reefs that have biological and physical importance against the Atlantic winds. That side is on the eastern side of our island. The infamous 4T pathways, trade, transport, travel and tourism, they are also our solution livelihoods. And if you just look at the pilot site, this is an aerial picture of the Sepa area, Maria Major, Maria Minor. There's a beautiful beach here called Sandy Beach. The Reef Restaurant, Windsurf and Kitesurf Center is there. Water spots buzzing up and down here. They're not allowed to land on the island. The runway of the Yonora International Airport is right there. On the other side, a major all-inclusive resort, Coconut Bay. The cargo harbor, transshipment harbor, some cruise ships and yachts come in there also, and next to it, a fisheries complex, and the interim landing site is on Maria Major. So everything goes on in that pilot area. The highest risk are probably predators, vertebrate predators, and in the terrestrial ecosystem. Rats are the number one risk, top priority, and in the marine, the lionfish which is in the prevention because we didn't have lionfish when we started the project. The St. Lucian skink is extinct as a species for many years. The mountain chicken is extirpated from St. Lucia as a result of vertebrate predators. It never even got a chance to get the cutrid fungus that has now eliminated it from Dominica and I think is also in Montserrat, very, very serious. I've mentioned the um, St. Lucia whiptail which used to be present only on the Maria Islands, but we've translocated it to Rat Island and Pralin Island to manage the risk. And the St. Lucian racer snake I've mentioned, now the rarest snake in the world. The global population is on this 12 hectare island. So the project focused on prevention, biosecurity capacity building, starting with the government agencies. The forestry department, together with Dural, maintains a set of sentinel bait stations on the different islands, not just Maria Island, to check for the presence or the incursion of rats and other alien predators. We prevent the reintroduction of these predators. They can come in fishing boats or the research boats, actually. So we develop public awareness material. Signage was erected on all the islands, on the islands and the shore side. We are mass produced a couple of um, brochures and other educational material. Timothy Jean Baptiste, who many will remember from meetings, did his MSc thesis on the solution with tail, and Dural funded the race assessment, and it is now regarded the rarest snake in the world. And under the GEF funding, we had a consultant in who helped us produce management plans for Denary and Pralin Island, again to manage the risk and to declare them hopefully soon protected areas. And I should mention that Pralin Island, 20 years ago, before the GEF-funded project, was the first island in the Caribbean where rat eradication was done. And yes, and it was eradication. So um, 
again, before I came onto this project, the whip tail was translocated down onto Rat Island, which is also rat free. And many of you had an opportunity to see the whip tail when we visited that island in October 2011, I think it was. So now that the GEF funding has dried up for St. Lucia, the direct GEF funding, the CPF project, Aliens Without, Islands Without Aliens, is taking on many of the activities seamless with Flora and Fauna International Dura and St. Lucia National Trust. They focus more on community and NGO capacity building, had regional exchanges with Anguilla and Antigua, maybe also soon Barbados. They have formalized the biosecurity and incursion plan for Maria Islands. It has been working quite well, but it wasn't really in writing. We now have that. Denary and the other islands are targeted. Denary Island mainly because it is the only island of size where we have any chance to translocate the racer to maybe in future, if we can build up whiptails and geckos and other prey species, the racers, the top of the food chain. But first, um, we had to remove the goats and sheep that were left loose there against theft and now the vegetation is recovering. A botanist did an inventory before and after, and now we are seeing what is coming back. And um, under that project also very recently, they um, finished a feasibility study to create mainland islands, what Pike mentioned this morning, with um, Wildlife Management International from New Zealand, to create an island on the mainland, safe from invasive species, and that m island falls into the um, Northern Corridor where San Lucia tries to develop the um, Ayanola project. What effect have we had so far? There is a lot more awareness for prevention. Snake sightings were reported from UFO port. This snake here, it is a racer, but probably the Puerto Rican racer, so it is an alien. We managed to um, intercept it. We had what we believed was above average sick and dead birds on Maria Island and also parrots in the reserve, our endemic parrot. And um, samples were tested negatively, fortunately, for avian influenza, Newcastle disease, and West Nile virus. So probably it was a spin-off effect of the hurricane. Escape pet parrots, orange wing parrots were recaptured. People phoned in and said there is something not normal here. And um, <coughs> This alien iguana was intercepted in a small marina near Castries. You hear more about that tomorrow. Pet monkey also, a lady phoned in, a relative of her had smuggled a pet monkey from Trinidad to St. Lucia and given it to her and she realized that was wrong and phoned the authorities and turned it over. So these are all the things where people, normal citizens have now buy-in. Let's move to marine. The marine reserve, Maria Island, was demarcated on the sea floor which was long overdue. And very quickly we started doing the monitoring, not just on the Atlantic side, but with the Dive Association, and Sufra Marine Management Association, also on the Caribbean side, where most of the recreational diving, almost all recreational diving is taking place. The um, <coughs> lionfish was always the threat when we started, and we had Bahamian experts come in and help us train in March 2011, which was half a year before lionfish was detected in St. Lucia. So we actually had a chance to build a response and action plan before, and build up a cadre of um, trained trainers before we detected lionfish in St. Lucia. We knew we couldn't prevent it, but we could be prepared for it. Start the sensitization, and that process continued, and as recently as 2013, Dane Bado and his team were over, and did another trainer for trainers, now focusing, of course, on the management. The chefs were trained in different preparations for lionfish, and that was a very high profile. The minister was there sampling at the end of the training, and it is now being promoted as a Creole food at the very cultural events, such as La Place Noël, which is a Creole Christmas market, Jeune Creole, which is the Creole festival day in October, and the many seafood fests and beach fries they have in the fishing villages. The fisheries department teamed up with Media Impact and they produced a lot of um, educational material to go to the schools with little quizzes on it. Media Impact got some mascots to go into the primary schools and Calypsonians volunteered their time for the secondary schools. I worked with La Mosaic Carnival Band who had a whole series on indigenous fauna and flora and invasive species. 
Walter Hyacinth and the King of the Band costume, The Lionfish, which has an excellent script and reached people we would not normally reach. Our Planet Multimedia had a multimedia information and game section in the cruise ship complex in our capital. And one of the games was based on Maria Island and you had to prevent wildfires, littering, invasive species. And it got ever more hectic as more people arrived. They were very generous to schools, basically not charging them anything. Unfortunately, they could not cover their maintenance fees with the higher tourist entrance fees. So they're looking at relocation now, currently closed, unfortunately. As I said, the marine monitoring is done with the Dive Association, SMMA. Sargassum seaweed, Halophila, lionfish. Lionfish was confirmed in October 2011. We quickly updated the databases and immediately triggered our response plan. Sorry, an S is missing there. The Sargassum carpets, when they drifted down, that was a really good example how successful our public awareness was. Around midday, three calls were received. I received one. Fisheries department, who were on lunch break, received two calls on cell phones. Immediately, the marine police was alerted, went out and sampled, brought us samples. I know nothing about Halophila, but I have a digital camera. I could send it around the networks. So if the colleague from Bahamas wants to be linked up to one of these networks we have, where you can post the picture, no problem, just give me your email address. In the afternoon, I had a preliminary ID. And the evening news, the director of the National Emergency Management Organization was on television and said, listen, this is the sargassum, it is floating down, it is not toxic algal bloom, it is not an oil spill, and it is not the Martinicans being up to mischief in our waters. There were all sorts of rumors going around. So that all happened within little more than half a day. St. Lucia also signed on to the Ballast Water Convention and drafted national legislation. And um, we hosted the anti-fouling regional seminar. So policy goes in hand in hand with um, practice. A couple of more examples where the general public and the private sector is buying into this and mainstreaming it. We get loads of reports of migratory birds because people are told, report what you're unfamiliar with. So if a rare or uncommon migratory bird comes, we get a call and we're happy. We say, yeah, but that's okay, that's a migratory bird. Thanks for calling anyway. After Hurricane Thomas, we got a couple of calls for insects. This is a day active moth. It looks like a butterfly. I didn't know, and apparently was blown over from the Guyanas and did not establish. But we were alerted to it. We get calls about a male native iguana at Fondor that likes to cross the road and look around for females. Because people know calling when you see an iguana where you're not used to. Monkey sightings in Deramo and Rodney Bay. The Rodney Bay one, we got rid of. The Deramo one's not yet. And the illegal pets that I mentioned that are handed in to authorities. We also developed three code, voluntary codes of conduct with the tourism sector, pet sector, and ornamental plants because these seem to be the main pathways. And um, the lady who runs the Reef Kite Surf Center was part of the tourism workshop and then really latched onto the ornamental plant workshop. And I want to close with her work words from an email to the botanist who helped us. Thanks a lot for all this. Fascinating stuff. I appreciate the relevance of all this, even if we only get to play a small part. I shudder to think of all the alien species we were cultivating there. I look at our beach with completely new eyes and keep asking myself, is that a native species or not? And yes, once or twice saying to myself, that? I've always treated that as a weed. Oops, it would be nice to somehow raise people's awareness as well. So she's right in the pilot site. I want to thank all these partners who buy in and do the work on the ground.